Hello, and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. Today, I'm going to be giving you three tips to help you self-direct your voiceover a lot better or at least uh, more efficient <laughs> than what you're doing now. I get this question a lot, and I hope that this video will help. All right, real quick, before we move on, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that when I do post a video or I go live, for example, tomorrow at one o'clock, you get notified, all right? Cool deal, thank you so much. All right, let's go ahead and dive in to uh, this, this topic today. I get this question a lot, and I think it's a great one. You know, um, how do I self-direct, Anthony? Uh, how do I know if I'm doing things right? Uh, I, I do a voiceover, and I listen to it. I think it's okay. Then I give it to someone else. I give it to my wife or my husband. I let someone else listen to it, and they say, "No way. That needs to be done this way." Or that's that's how, you know that doesn't sound right. So I want to give you three tips today uh, to help you um, self direct. Okay, um, real quick before we get into that, just so you know. Uh, there'll be a link below for my Fiverr course, uh, how to make $20,000 uh, in Fiverr for voiceover. There'll be a link below for that, as well as one on uh, VOsJourney.com website. And uh, it's it's a fantastic course, uh, helps so many people. It'll definitely get your journey on Fiverr kicked off right, get you making some money. It's uh, been just, um, I'm, I'm so thankful that it's helped so many people. And um, it's available. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into into these three tips okay tip number one for helping you self-direct better and that is make a clear acting decision all right so what do I mean by that I mean that when you go into any voiceover it doesn't matter if it's a 15 second commercial if it's an e-learning spot if it's medical narration if it's a video game character if it's an explainer video if it's a intro for a podcast uh, whatever you are doing, okay, make a clear acting decision about how you are going to relay the message, okay? I call it the story underneath the story, but you should be able to make an acting decision and then actually tell me what you are trying to say without using the words that you are telling me. So basically what I mean by that is every voiceover we do, I think there's two stories there. One is the story of the words that you're saying. The second is the story of how you're saying those words. What message, what feelings are you trying to convey by the way you're saying them? OK, that's the acting decision I'm talking about. So, for example, if you wanted to do a voiceover about, you know, selling a cheesecake. OK. Um, and, you know, the, the people you're selling cheesecake to, uh, is, you know, are people who are vacationing in, you know, Barbados. I don't know. I'm making this up. All right. And it's supposed to be this l luxurious and, and luscious and delicious cheesecake. I don't know why I got cheesecake. I didn't have lunch. Anyways. So in your mind, the acting decision you want to make is not only we're going to talk about the cheesecake, but in a way that we're going to make an acting decision of how we're going to relay this message of just utter, um, um, like, uh, um, not just excitement, but, you know, like love for this cheesecake and how just amazingly decadent it is. Right. And and so we, we want to relay that message of how just infatuated we are with this cheesecake. Okay, of course, I'm being over the top about all this to hopefully give you an understanding of what I'm saying. So not only like so even though the words might be describing this cheesecake, OK, and and the, the goodness of the cheesecake, the way we say it also relays a message. And when we say make an acting decision, it means you go all in. You don't hold anything back. Again, I'm not talking about going over the top, but I'm just talking about, you know, you're making that acting decision and you're able to say, hey, I'm trying to relay this message through the way I'm telling this story. OK, does that make sense? All right. So that's tip number one. Make a clear acting decision. All right. Tip number two. And I use this one like crazy. Find a couple of video references or video or voice or, uh, or, or music references, 
uh, video or voiceover references that you can relate or you can rely on or go back to and listen to when you're trying to call upon a specific style of voiceover. So, for example, if you wanted to do a matter-of-fact, everyman type of voiceover for men, that is very popular, right? Very, a wisdom, you know, uh, deeper in your pitch, very much similar to Pure Michigan from Tim Allen, right? Um, or uh, Richard Dreyfus in the video from uh, Apple uh, about 10 years ago, you know, you pick videos, you you find voiceovers from videos or demos that give you the that that help you imagine in your mind you saying it or the type of feel you're going for and use those as a reference. And then when you do your voiceover, listen to it, listen to that reference and see if those two mix. OK, and that's a great way for you to tell, hey, am I trying to hit it on the head? Am I am I getting what I'm trying to do? Those references will help you because, listen, you can't just conjure up stuff all the time just on the spot. Right. Use references, use tools. These types of videos, these types of voiceovers, these people, they're very helpful and it should help you out a lot. OK, so that's tip number two. Find references that you could put in your back pocket. You could save the links to go back, identify what type of delivery style they are, whatever you want to call them, and go back and call upon them so you can imitate, not impersonate, but imitate the cadence, the feel of it. Got it? Okay, like perfect example, Morgan Freeman. You might not do a Morgan and Freeman impression, but you can definitely imitate his cadence. OK, and the style of his delivery. But, you know, and, and we don't want to I mean, unless you're an impressionist, but you don't want to, you know, imitate or, or impersonate his voice. But the, the cadence is very good. You know, he's got a great cadence. He's got a great delivery style. Does that make sense? So use references. OK, so that's tip number two. Now, tip number three. This has been the biggest, the best one for me. Uh, and I've had to put the most work in on this one, but it'll be the most beneficial for you. OK, tip number three. Tip number three is with your copy, identify, and I use sometimes backslashes, identify in your copy the beginning, the middle, and the end using backslashes, meaning that every, uh, every voiceover you do, okay, now there are exceptions like e-learning or something where it's just like a technical manual, in which case this doesn't necessarily apply to that. But generally speaking, every voiceover from audiobook to long form narration to short form to commercials, whatever, okay, has a beginning, a middle and an end. Okay, there is, you know, a problem stated. All right, something going on. All right, which is the beginning. Right. Why the problem matters to you and then how we solve it. Okay, this follows the old, you know, um, story plot. You being able to identify where the beginning is, where the middle is and where the end is, is vital to this next part. And part two of this step three is once you identify the beginning, middle and at the end, Make them contrast. Make the beginning contrast to the middle and make the middle contrast uh, or make the end contrast to the middle. You've got to make them different. Right. And, and what I mean by different is it could be the pitch or the type of expression. OK. Or, you know, ending up like on a question, you know, why does it have to be this way? Well, it doesn't. Introducing. Right. Right. You know, like there, there is a flow and the more you do voiceover, the more scripts you read, you will realize that in, in books, anything, there is a story, right? We're telling stories. Even if the story uh, is, you know, you're selling a product, it's still a story about the product and it should have a beginning, middle and an end. It might only be a word or two words or three words. Now, when it's a word or two words, right? I mean, that's a different story. OK, but it still has a beginning, a middle and an end. All right. And you know, those, those, you know, like if you like EA Sports, it's in the game. Right. Like that kind of thing. Right. How do you how do you go about doing something like that? Most of us don't do those. 
Okay, most of us have longer form. Okay, so we're kind of talking about more than two words or three words here, uh, even though those have stories as well. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that with your script, identify the beginning, middle, and an end. Okay, use backslashes or whatever to identify where that begins and ends, where the begins and ends, where it starts and finishes. Okay, and then contrast it and go back and listen to it and see can you identify listening to yourself the contrasting parts from the beginning, middle, and in the end. This is a great, great way to self-direct yourself, if nothing else, to make sure that you've clearly identified what the text is trying to relay. Okay, now again, these can be subtle differences, subtle contrasting differences, but it's important that they are somewhat different or the whole thing is just going to sound like you're just reading it instead of you, you guiding the words, you guiding the message. You know what I mean? I always say, who's running this? You or the words? Okay, are you running it or the words running it? Listen, I hope these three tips helped you in your self-direction. This is a big, big question I get a lot. A lot of people, especially newer people, uh, you know, want to get better at this. I'm going to be putting out another acting course coming on here. I am finishing up on the audiobook course. I'm doing a brand new course. Uh, I've, I'm, about, I'm about 60% through. It's a great course on how to make money with audiobooks. I'm super excited about that. But I will be putting out an, an acting um, course as well. But anyways, needless to say, I hope that this video helps. Watch it back as many times as you can. All right. And if you have a moment, like and subscribe. Remember, check out that link below if you're interested in that Fiverr course. And I hope you have a great, great Thursday. I will probably most likely see you tomorrow at one o'clock for Fiverr Friday. All right. Take it easy, everybody. Goodbye.